Let's bring in Dr Catherine Henderson, the president of the Royal College of Emergency Medicine. Uh, good morning. Uh, we're seeing the rates rise, but we're also seeing the vaccine being rolled out at a pace. Uh, what needs to happen now then? So the problem that we've got at the moment is that there are a significant number of staff going off with COVID. Obviously, the, the workforce of the NHS is part of the general population. And as the, the rates rise, it's inevitable that staff uh, get infected. And our problem is, is that at the same time as we're trying to manage all the other work and the vaccination uh, programme, we, we see a lot of, of staff going off sick. So the thing that we need at the moment is obviously for the rates to go down as fast as possible. So we need people to be very aware of the risks of catching um, COVID at the moment because it seems so easily transmittable. And we need people to understand just what pressures the system is under so that if there are any ways that they can avoid needing the emergency services, uh, they do. We know that Omicron is more transmissible, but are you comforted by the fact that early indicators are that if people have been vaccinated, if they've been exposed to COVID before, that um, it's not as bad, that they're not as poorly as they have been with other variants? I think we're still waiting the data to confirm that's the case, but we're seeing patients who are unvaccinated coming into hospital who are poorly. So that's the problem. Again, because of the high rates, it is inevitable that the COVID infection will get to those patients who are unvaccinated, many of whom are extremely vulnerable. And so we will get patients who are sick and need admission and need potentially an intensive care facilities because simply there is so much around. It, it will get to people who have not been vaccinated, even if we have got some protection from people who have been boosted. Is it manageable, though? The peak in last January was nearly 39,000 people in hospital with COVID. At the moment, it's about 7,500. Can we carry on as we are and see how Plan B takes hold? I think that's the real worry of people's understanding, that we're trying to do something differently from last year. We try, last year, we had very much of our services shut down. We don't want to do that this time. We want to be able to carry on with doing some elective surgery. There are people who have been waiting a very long time for some very serious operations, and we don't want to make the backlog any worse. So we're trying to manage work carrying on in the NHS, but we may reach a point where we have to cancel a lot more of the routine work, or the well, it's, it's barely routine now, it's mostly urgent work, and that we have to redeploy staff but we're already short of staff. So that's going to put a, a great deal of pressure. It's not about protecting the NHS, it's about protecting the population by providing a health service. So is your fundamental concern more about the strength of the virus or about not having the staff in place because of the virus? Well, well both, both are the issue. We have a workforce problem because we've got people going off sick. We have patients who are coming in with COVID, We've got patients who are coming in with another problem and are found to have COVID. Now, that immediately causes difficulties about where do you place them in the hospital? Somebody comes in with a broken leg and your testing identifies that they've got COVID. You can't put them in an orthopaedic ward that is trying to do elective surgery for people who are being protected from catching COVID. So you've got all the inefficiencies of trying to manage infection streams. You've also got the lack of staff. So it's all interconnected. It isn't an either or. We have a problem. We have a lot of COVID. It will badly affect people's outcomes if they are vulnerable, if they are unvaccinated. Um, they're more likely to need to be admitted if they're unvaccinated. But the amount of patients is going to be a problem. Do you worry that if there are more restrictions, you work in emergency medicine and last time we saw that people didn't present um, when they should have done at emergency services because of lockdown restrictions. That's on top of the economic ramifications, the social implications for people who become invisible to the state. Do you worry that if we do see more measures, more restrictions, that the collateral damage will be massive? I agree that that is a, is a considerable worry, and I think we're beginning to see that already. I'm very worried that the most vulnerable patients will be the most fearful of coming to hospital because they're worried about catching an infection from a crowded emergency department. So I really want those people to still come. The moment we see um, people, more people staying at home, we see you know, less of the falling over in the street, you know, cutting yourselves with a, with a knife in a restaurant. Those sorts of things reduce 
that's fine, but it's the most seriously unwell that we still want to come, but we want it to be a safe, welcoming environment. But at the moment, our emergency departments are crowded, our ambulance delays are significant. We've got to try and balance. None of this is risk-free. There's mm. always risks. But okay. clearly, the thing that we can do is shut down the number, try and reduce the number of people who are catching COVID. OK, a difficult balance to strike. Dr Catherine Henderson, President of the Royal College of Emergency Medicine. I hope you get some rest over Christmas. Thank you. Colleagues. Thank you.